Get out! The zombie island mystery! This is it! One of the unsolved capers! Hi, this is Mark Morrell from Toon Barn. We're here at the 50th anniversary of San Diego Comic-Con. And we're also talking about the 50th anniversary of Scooby-Doo. Right. Oh, he's never looked so good. No, he, he looks good. He does. It's, you know, especially dog ears, it's 350. Yeah, that's right. No mange. Nothing. The scoliosis is <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly. Of course, I'm here with Jeremy Adams and Jim Krieg. Welcome, guys. Hi. Well, thank you. It's always nice to be in the barn. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So with Scooby-Doo around, of course, he's like uh, a, a jack of all trades when it comes to sleuthing and, of course, food. Yes. Okay, so well, what are your... He's a terrible detective. Yeah. He's yeah. just a, a great eater and, and also makes ver legitimately uh, excellent live bait. Yes. Yes, that's right. But, I mean, the food situation, I do have a funny story. Like, my brother, we'd watch Scooby-Doo, and my brother one time decided to make a Scooby sandwich, and he got everything out of it. And we were pretty poor, and he got everything out of the fridge, made this giant sandwich, put a, a rope around it, tried, it didn't work. And then my mom He's came in. This up. No, no, no. And then my mom came in and goes, uh, you're eating that. Because <laughs> you had, like, and my, he was, I mean. You can't waste food. Oh, yeah, you can't waste food. And it was disgusting. And he. She didn't make him eat all of it, but he ate a lot. And I have to ask, did his jaw unhinge like Jared and uh, no. And Scooby Natural? Oh, thank goodness, no. <laughs> so you guys were both the writers on the Supernatural yeah, crossover. Yeah, yeah. So how was it? How was it doing that one? It, it was it was a weird cartoon miracle. Yeah. It really was. It was the. It's probably one of the best, if not the best, professional experience mm -hmm. that I've been a part of and they, they premiered at the Paley Fest it was the Kodak Theater thousands of people people cheering screaming and howling and um, they had the mystery machine there with somebody dressed as Scooby it was it was remarkable yeah that wasn't the real Scooby what? No, because uh, he wasn't eating. Oh, um, no. We were just talking about how in, in, usually in our jobs you get a lot of notes, a lot of people telling you what you did wrong and these were this is a weird situation where everyone, the notes sessions were like we love page 25 yeah. and then 26. You know, it yeah. was like, it was a weird yeah. love yeah. fest. Line 354 and we, okay, uh, that was great. I was like, yeah. oh, okay. It was like getting notes, <laughs> notes from that Chris Farley character. Yeah. Remember yeah. when you did that? Yeah. That was awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> it was great. And, it, you know, part of it is because everybody involved knows what Scooby-Doo is. So it's not like it's yes. some random character. They're like, oh. Shaggy would totally do that. You know, yeah, everybody no, in England. No one would say, I don't think Velma would really put the pieces of the mystery together because everyone goes, oh, that's exactly what she would do. You know, that's exactly right. Yeah. Right. So we just found out in a panel just before this that Scooby Doo, Where Are You? The complete series is yes. coming out on a limited edition Blu ray yep. available on September 3rd. So thank you for joining us at Toon Barn at San Diego Comic Con. Thank you for having us. It's always a pleasure. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye. The writer of 15 Lego Scooby-Doo shorts, co-writer of the Scooby Natural episode of Scooby-Doo Shorts. And if you're here tomorrow, we'll be premiering the uh, Return to Zombie Island that uh, he also wrote. 10 a.m., 6 BCF, be there. Sunday is Jeremy Day. Jeremy Adams! Bella has a 17 year history with Scooby, dating all the way back to 2002's A Scooby Doo Christmas Short. He's the co producer on this year's Curses of the 13th Ghost. He was the producer on What's New Scooby Doo back in 2002. Woo! Wrote uh, with Jeremy Adams the Scooby Natural episode of Scooby <laughs> Lego Scooby Doo Haunted Hollywood. Frankie Creepy. Yeah, 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 they get it. You get it all right. <laughs> Gentlemen of the production team, is there a Scooby-Doo playbook? Is there a essentials that you have to include? Are there, or is there a, a system by which you choose how to do it? I will say that um, I think it varies. Um, I was taught under the tutelage of the Scooby-Dooologist Jim Creek here. Um, and in fact, uh, when I first started writing for Scooby-Doo, he gave me a 
uh, like five books, and like Scooby-Doo handbooks. And he's like, now go, son. And, learn. <laughs> and, um, and for us, you know, for me, I should say, uh, Scooby and Shaggy probably have a tapeworm. Uh, never stop eating. Uh, there's an innocence about it um, and a good part of nature. And it's also, I think, it's, it's really about teaching kids to cope with fear and unmasking that and making sure they know that it's nothing, nothing's really there to be afraid of. It's to be discovered and dealt with. I'm fairly militant about my, I'm, I'm like pretty Old Testament Scooby, so, you know, I, I would get Jeremy's script back and say, you're wrong, it's too long, and why didn't they dress up like uh, uh, waiters and uh, try to serve the ghost of meal, and, you know, there's certain things I want to hit, like, oh, the, the pop song is too good, it should be bad, you know, <laughs> things like that. So, he minuses everything. That's okay. um, I certainly know the playbook, and I very often don't use it. <laughs> I've, I've consulted, you know, with I think several other partners on, on this too. I, I think everybody that comes to it has a slightly different version of the playbook is, is what I've come to see. And, and in kind of watching back the various series, the various producers that have handled Scooby and the, and I think everybody approaches it just slightly different. And that's kind of fun to see because there's always like a little bit of an evolution, I think, with, with Scooby and some new comedy that could come from that, new fun. So um, I've, I've enjoyed sort of trying to contribute to that with the, the few movies I've been lucky to work on. I think we've reached our limit for the day.